Following the War of Independence, representatives of the Sinn Féin government and the British government met in London and negotiated an agreement that was signed on the 6th of December 1921, the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which brought an end to the conflict. In January 1922, the Provisional Government of Southern Ireland was established, with Michael Collins as its chairman. One of the first acts of Collins was to establish a committee to draft the Constitution of the Irish Free State. Michael Collins appointed himself as chairman of this committee, and Darrell Figgis, an executive member of Sinn Féin, as deputy chair. The draft constitution was published on the 15th of June 1922. Darrell Figgis highlighted the importance of Article 48 in his book published in 1922, The Irish Constitution Explained. For it is a sound rule that the people are generally better than their representatives, wiser of counsel, more disinterested of judgment, and it is therefore provided in the constitution that there shall be an assembly of representatives, but that the people may require of that assembly that laws be referred to them for final decision, or that laws be made to suit their desire. Article 48 of the 1922 Constitution was inspired by the post-First World War constitutions in continental Europe that were designed to foster an active association of the people with lawmaking. It stated, The Oireachtas may provide for the initiation by the people of proposals for laws or constitutional amendments on the petition of not less than 75,000 voters. Also in October 1922, Kevin O'Higgins moved that the constitution be passed by the Doyle, remarking, This constitution should be prized by the people. It was one in tile, in danger and in stress. It was negotiated on the cliff's edge and it gives to Ireland the care of her own household. It puts into the hands of the Irish people the making and moulding and the amending or repealing of their own laws. The Constitution of the Irish Free State Act 1922 was adopted by an Act of Doyle Éireann on the 25th of October 1922. Successive governments, however, failed to enact the legislation to give effect to Article 48. In May 1928, Eamon de Valera, the leader of the Fianna Fáil party established in 1926, submitted a petition with over 96,000 signatures to the Dáil to bring about the direct democracy provisions embodied in Article 48. The government's response to de Valera's petition was to introduce a Constitution Amendment Bill to remove entirely Article 48. The government had the power to do this under Article 50, which allowed the Constitution to be amended through legislation in its initial eight years. Opposing the removal of Article 48, Eamon de Valera argued passionately in the Dáil debate in June 1928 for its retention. One of the reasons why I am anxious for it is one of the reasons put forward here when it was accepted by the Provisional Parliament. At that time, it was stated that it associated the people with their own laws. It gave them the feeling that they were the ultimate power, the ultimate rulers in the country. It gave them an interest which they would not otherwise have in legislation and in the laws generally. It gave the people an opportunity of considering certain questions in a way which they would not be discussed or considered at general elections at all. In 1937, de Valera, now leader of the Fianna Fáil government, proposed a new constitution of Ireland to replace the 1922 constitution. Although only nine years earlier, de Valera had championed the direct democracy provisions contained in Article 48, his new constitution failed to reintroduce these. Now that de Valera had power firmly in his hands, he did not want any possible interference from the people of Ireland by means of petitions. The 1922 constitution reflected a very positive vision of direct democracy. The idea was that people could initiate legislative change or constitutional amendments. Now, as the centenary of 1916 approaches, has the time come to revisit that democratic vision?